Welcome back everyone to Missions 101 where today we will begin the seventh set of the ten sets of missions and of course we'll do the first two missions of that for this episode. Let's begin with Horn here who has three of them today and that means that Ozma will have five. Our first mission being an age-long theft. My scouts have just returned from Bakar Zarak. It seems the orcs of Gundabad keep countless weapons of the dwarves as trophies within that tower. If the weapon of one of my scouts recovered is of any indication, many may have been forged before Gundabad fell in the Second Age. It is of great importance that these weapons not be allowed in the hands of the orcs. They're unworthy the Barret. You are to travel to Bekar Zarach and relieve the orcs of these ill-gotten weapons for the Jaruka, for the Gabil Aka, for the Gabil Aka. What's the twist on all this? Raging, the monsters in this mission will enrage at low morale. High in the tower of Bekar Zarach, the orcs of Gundabad prepare for war. In their keeping are weapons of dwarf make, stolen long ago in the sack of Gundabad. Your mission is to reclaim the dwarf-made weapons held as trophies by the orcs in Bekar Zarak. Then let's go. An age log theft. And of course, we need to wait an age for the mobs to appear. Beginning, of course, with a black arrow here. Uh, we could deal with him pretty quickly. Now, I would like to get this one right here. Did I get him at the right timing? No, I missed it. That's the problem with... With my lower level character, I have no trouble making it because I have time to set it up properly. But here, it's getting in the proper angle and all that stuff. So I'm always just... A second late in getting that timing right. Fortunately, it's just one black arrow and I could easily pull him to a location where it's more convenient for me to fight him. No problem. And as you can see, I get back to him. The weapons are being held by the orcs. Now, where they are because the Weapons this guy is holding. Do they look like dwarf made weapons? Just say. Not too sure about that. Because I would assume, you would think that if they have dwarf made weapons, they would be. Oh, of course, because the black arrow. Was, I'm sorry, where's the black arrow that's usually with them? Of course! We killed him already! I should keep track of such things. Because remembering things like that could be important someday. Now, there are more more than 14 orcs in this place. As far as I know, you always get a weapon every time. That means a weapon is a 100% drop on this. Despite the not great logic on that being the case. Alright, let's... Actually, this is the Black Arrow. Well, we can deal with that. That's right, these guys rage, don't they? Ha I forgot about that little twist, didn't it? Yeah, alright. He holds his weapon up in the air in order to rage. I I'm pretty sure that cleaver is not a dwarf-made weapon. So perhaps his off-hand weapon, that sword, is the... is the dwarf made weapon. Now I could believe that an axe would be a dwarf made weapon. Now I haven't had a chance to check the quality of that specific axe, but at least that's plausible. But a meat cleaver, that doesn't sound like one. Since I'm not an expert in dwarf craft crafting on how well they make their weapons and all that fun stuff. Oh, okay, we have that patroller getting ready to come down here. Uh, 
I forgot that we've got two black arrows to worry about here. Oh, okay. I was wondering, where did that other one go? And I, I did hear the ding of a enemy falling dead. So I will assume that that was that. Yes. The lovely sound of ding when an enemy falls. <laughs> there you go. Yes, I know. A slave bell is a bit of a frivolous thing to go around carrying into a mission like this instead of a more powerful item, but sometimes it comes in handy in order to keep track of what's going on with the enemies. Now, let's get back down to here. Ah, yes. The chest over here. And the scout. You've done well to reclaim what was taken from his pine leaf. Let's return and report your success to Horing. Yes, let's go. I've made it back safely. Well done. I shall send these to our greatest myths and scholars that they might be identified in return to the rightful owner's kin. All right. There you go. Now, what do you need me to do next? My scouts have reported a band of drakes flying towards Scarhald. I am certain the Frost Drakes will assault our fortress in Eridmithrin. We must depart for Scarhald immediately and assist in thwarting this assault. Oh, another one of those defend Scarhald. Boy, Scarhald really gets attacked quite a bit, don't they? Well, let's go and take care of those drakes. And our twist is... The fortress of Scarhald is under attack. The Frost Horde has launched an assault from parts unknown in Eridmithrin in hopes to drive the dwarves away. Your mission is to defend the fortress of Scarhald from a Frost Horde assault. Hremil's chosen. Well, I guess that makes sense. Now, even though I see a number of dwarves and drakes up here, those are just decoration, and we need to wait for the actual foes to appear. Aha, uh -huh, and there's the first one right there. Looks like a random selection of drakes that are sent to you, meaning you're not going to get the same ones in the same position, and, and unfortunately... Two large drakes coming out at the same time is probably not optimal for reasons that are obvious right now because I'm in the crazy blizzard of free mill. This is the might of free mill. So it looks like all the large drakes have this ability. 7,000 frost damage every three seconds. Okay. Which is probably why my morale is going down at a pretty rapid clip right now. So let me get out of that mess. And have a bite to eat. Then I could head off and maybe if I'm lucky won't constantly land into the big ones. Not that the small ones are an easy matter either because they have this crazy cold metal thing. Let me get out of that so I can actually do some damage there. Another big one. Hmm. They love giving me those big ones there. Looks like the darker ones are the cinematic ones. They're just for show. Well, there. Uh, I still had something up from the previous one, and that actually gave me what I needed to interrupt them. <laughs> oh, that was perfect. Usually, whatever is queued up already is inconvenient. But occasionally, one is helpful. Now, there seems to be another blue one up here. There you go. Cold vulnerability. Yeah. They really love that one. And, and of course, freezing metal. Let, let's get out of the freezing metal. And get up the stairs. 
yeah use up that particular gambit before I do anything oh boy they just like to be annoying that's all they like to do let's be annoying because we're the little ones like goblins <laughs> Well, that was a little out of sequence. No, 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 no more things like that. Of course, there's a big one next, which means that if it's three mils chosen, well, don't worry, it's going to be. Oh, there, there are two of them! Oh! Well. I'll get rid of one blizzard, but not both of them, probably. Oh, where I've got ways of getting out of the blizzard. That's... Which is useful. And we don't have to stand in that really annoying sound, annoying visual, and annoying damage. This is annoying as it can be. There you go. Now, did that open up the... No, that's still up there. That means I missed somebody. Because you have to kill every single one of them. It's like... At least that's as far as I can tell. So this one is actually gated on top of having... Creamels chosen to worry about. Now, oh-ho, there is another one up here. It really should put a counter on this. Maybe the exact count changes from run to run so they don't have a counter there. That would be nice. Or some other indications so that you know when that Frost gate is open, so I don't have to run all the way back up there to check out the frost gate and then run all the way back. All right, let's make sure that there's nobody else around here. None that I can see. So now we can head back up, clip on warden speed, and up the stairs. Up, up. And I'm thinking that this time the door shall be open. Yes. So that leaves us here with um, skirt these. Well, try to skirt this. There you go. Now, oh no, I'm definitely not letting that one do hearing was chosen. <laughs> yeah, that one I was absolutely sure was going to have it when I entered this. I wasn't so sure about the regular drakes, but yeah, this one definitely I knew was going to have it. it. Looks really nasty. I'm looking at the portrait there. Yes. <laughs> it looks really nasty on the portrait there. Now, let's see. We want to head back here. I guess he didn't want to get too close to that Drake boss there. Oh, I was wondering, where, where's the missions reward? There it is. Are we done? Great work, Pine Leaf. With the Frost Horde assault defeated, let us return to report your success. But, but, but what about those guys over there? Are the defenders have that well in hand, I guess. Okay, then. We are back from Scarhald. Well done! With the Drake Assault defeated, Scarhald is once again safe. The last thing we need is our greatest fortress in Arid Mithrin in ruin. Well, it looks like it started out that way, so I'm not too sure <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> well, that's it for that mission. And that's it for the first pair of missions in this set. Next time, we will do two more missions. Let's see, what do we have coming up? We have Ore Overflowing. Oh, I think that means we're going back into Sundagrot. And the Chill on the Gladimir. Oh. Chill on the Gladimir. That sounds like the 
Frost Horde is up to other nasty things. Is that the case? We'll have to find that out in the next episode of Missions 101.